Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's Amin here uh, on my own this time for episode 85 of the Mind Heist podcast. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm recording. You'll probably notice the audio quality is a bit better this time because we're not recording through Zoom for once. Yeah. Um, now, in this episode, I, I thought, let me just put something together, make sure we get an episode out this week. And I wanted to share something really. Let me explain. Yeah. So sometimes or every now and then I come across some kind of information or some kind of basically paradigm shifting lecture or information or video or something like that and I came across one of those today um, I started listening to this lecture a few days ago I finished it today and I just thought you know what this was in Arabic uh, most of you won't be able to access it because it's in Arabic and so you know let me share the main ideas from this and the main things I benefited from it and I think it was a really good kind of wake-up call for me um, I think I've mentioned before on the podcast that I often, when I'm not seeking knowledge, like when I'm not doing any kind of following any kind of series or studying any specific topic, um, I, I do feel a, a noticeable change in my, I guess you you would call it Iman, to be honest. Um, and so the, this uh, lecture was recommended to me by a brother. Uh, and... He said, look, uh, I, out of all the lectures out there, um, out of all the books or whatever out there, I recommend these two lectures. So he narrowed it down to, to two lectures. And I thought, OK, if you are narrowing it down to two lectures, not 10, not 20, it means you're being really selective. So I took, you know, I took heed of that, basically. And I listened to this. Uh, I'm listening to the other one now, just started it. But this was, um, let me find the name of it for you because if you know Arabic then you might still um, be able to listen to it and I, obviously I recommend you listen to it because what I'm going to do with you inshallah this episode is I'm going to uh, take you through the main points and just uh, we'll talk through it basically together on a casual one um, and this lecture is called if you want to search it on YouTube it's uh, the title of the video is Muhadara Ghayr Hayatik Ghayr Hayatik uh, change your life, okay? Al Sheikh Doctor Al Bashir Isam Al Marakshi Bitanja, okay? So this is a Moroccan Sheikh uh, called I just mentioned his name, uh, Sheikh Al Bashir Isam Al Marakshi. So he's from Marrakesh or in Ar in English, Marrakesh, and this was a lecture. It looks like he was doing it in a university hall in Tanja, okay? Tanja is. Tangiers in English. So um, let's let's start, inshallah. Let's go through it. Okay, so so yeah, this this talk is called uh, "Change Your Life." Okay, and he he started off making it clear that he's actually addressing what you might call practicing people. Okay, people who you know they they don't do major sins generally. Um, they don't do major sins. They're not like proud of sins they do they're generally trying okay they might be falling short but they're trying okay so uh, the first thing I've got down here is when you obey Allah okay so he's saying like you guys uh, you're trying to obey Allah uh, you're doing your best you, you don't tend to do like major sins and you're not open with public with your sins um, but still when you do obey Allah when you do worship Allah that is the time to actually do istighfar, right? So it's like you need to remember to do istighfar and you need to do it regularly, right? Istighfar meaning seeking forgiveness from Allah. And he mentioned a few uh, stories and quotes that mentioned that you should be doing istighfar when things are going well, when you're in obedience to Allah. Like he said, that the, the, it's narrated from the Prophet ﷺ, that when you finish your prayer, you should say, Astaghfirullah, three times. You say, Astaghfirullah, three times, after you finish your prayer. And that is because of the uh, what might be missing from that act of worship. Right. So you're like admitting that the, the act of worship was not really befitting of Allah. It wasn't done perfectly. So you seek forgiveness from Allah for that. Uh, also, um, Surat uh, Nasr, I think, Surat Nasr, it says, 
ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا So he said when you see people entering the deen, entering Islam in waves uh, I think it means in waves or a lot of people or they're rushing to, jo- um, to enter Islam ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين أفواجا فسبح بالله واستغفر I'm saying it wrong. ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك So so glorify Allah. Say subhanallah and glorify Allah. فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر and seek his forgiveness. إنه كان توابا He is the one accepting of you turning back to him. Accepting of uh, uh, Toba. So th- that, that um, ayah or that surah also indicates that when you do good deeds, you should actually seek forgiveness at that time, okay? So he started by talking about that, and he said this is for uh, people who are doing good, right? But you need to recognize that you're falling short in, in one form or another, and that is the time to seek forgiveness when you do those good deeds. Okay, the next thing he talked about is you have to have high ambitions. And he said it's crazy for me that when I talk to old people, they want to do big things, right? They have the, what well, he says, they have the ambition of a young person and the young people have the ambition of an old person. Like what he, you know, considered to be the ambition of an old person, which is, oh no, it's difficult. Oh, they're not that optimistic. But the good thing that you get with youth, usually, is that they are, they are naive, right? They're naive and they're ignorant of the difficulties of going about certain uh, challenges like going about doing things right so young people are the ones that tend to like lead revolutions or make big changes or like you see in business like disrupt a whole industry because they're actually not aware of how difficult it will be right so uh, trying to give an example here like if you think of <laughs> it's cliche but if you think of Elon Musk Elon Musk although he wasn't that young when he started Tesla I believe he's around 40 or just under 40 when he started Tesla, um, he wasn't in the car manufacturing business, right? So he was ignorant of how difficult it would be to create a car company, especially from scratch. But it's because of that that he started the company. You get it? So if he wasn't ignorant of how difficult it would be, he probably would have been put off and he wouldn't have started the company. So what the Sheikh is saying is that Young people should be the ones with big ambitions, ambitions that are too big, maybe unrealistic. But he's saying, I'm seeing the opposite. I'm seeing that, 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 that they see things as intimidating and difficult. And that's not good. You should actually be aiming high. And we know this is from uh, our dean to actually aim high. And remember that it's not you who's going to accomplish it. It's Allah who's going to accomplish it. Right. And if you're going to ask from Allah, then ask for firdos, ask, ask for the highest, ask for the best thing, and try and, and aim high, really. And we need that. We need leaders. Um, you know, I don't need to be the one saying this. Everybody knows we need not rulers or people with power, but we need leaders. And it's a very different thing, right? A leader is not just somebody who has authority. It's somebody who actually takes initiative. They're proactive and they take responsibility. Okay, they take responsibility. So um, instead of, you know, waiting for a, some kind of organization, or so, even sometimes you're waiting for a sheikh to tackle a topic uh, or topic, tackle an issue, and that just doesn't happen, you n- sometimes need to stand up and do it, right? And this is kind of what youth have done a lot of the time. They've been the ones to take initiative because they, they don't see the barriers that older, more experienced people see, right? So he said, you know, we have to aim high. And, you know, if you think of, if you think of young people or, or no, religious people, sorry, people who like trying at least to be good and, and please Allah, those are the people that need to have the highest ambitions. They need to be going the furthest, okay, in, in all areas, to be honest, all halal areas. We could do with those kind of people everywhere, even if it's not in the best of industries where, you know, you might consider that it's not the best use of your time to be in that industry. Um, but if we're going to have people in that industry, it's always going to be better that it's practicing good, committed Muslims that are there, right? So whatever industry you're in, try to be practicing and try to bring that flavor to that thing, whatever you're doing. Just because you're not seeking knowledge, that's not a problem. 
you know, like full time, just because you don't want to be a scholar, just because you don't want to teach Quran, just because you don't want to uh, start a charity or be involved in a charity, it doesn't mean you can't work in that area, in that field, in that domain, and not bring a change to it, positive change, bring that flavor of being a practicing Muslim. Okay. Then he said, um, we have to have the right balance between love of Allah, fear of Allah, and hope in Allah. Right, and these kind of things um, come together in a, in the right balance. They allow you to be like ambitious, optimistic, confident, and all of the right things to actually achieve something in your life. And the, the general flavor of this talk is that it was about kind of pushing you to to do more and achieve more. And yeah, don't be complacent. Basically, um, yeah, that's actually a point I want to cover. Is that he was saying like, look, don't wait until something specific happens like you need to change now like you, even if it's a small step you need to make a big change you need to realize that what have i done with my life what am i doing with my life so far like come on you need to just do just move yeah just move and the, some steps are so obvious right and, and how many talks have you heard where you know the the speaker just says something like the importance of reading the quran or the the reward you know, everyone knows the reward for reading the Quran. And if you stutter or if you find it difficult, then you get more reward, etc. But then how often are we reading the Quran, right? So we don't need more information on the benefits of doing certain acts of worship. We generally just need to take action, right? So that was a big thing he was pushing. Now, he's saying that, yes, the balance between love of Allah, um, fear of Allah and hope in Allah. So he was saying, you know, fear of like love of Allah is what makes you want to like do good deeds. Fear of Allah is what makes you kind of avoid his punishment, right? Uh, by seeking uh, his forgiveness and trying to avoid sins, right? And then hope in Allah is what makes you have that good opinion of Allah, husnul dhan billah, and um, believe that the future can hold great things for you. Okay, whether that's in Jannah or, or things that you want to accomplish uh, here while you're alive in the dunya, right? So he's saying that's very important for your confidence, for your optimism, for your ambition to have a good balance of those things. Um, then he says, um, th this is something that I really feel I need to work on, which he said, always see your deeds as lacking and work on improving them, right? So he said, if I think he said it was Sayyidina Omar. Sayyidina Omar who said that whoever sees his deeds no it wasn't, it was, I think it was Hassan al-Basri he said whoever sees whoever is pleased with his deeds then know that Allah is not pleased with those deeds okay and for me that's that's already a tough pill to swallow because uh, like I said a few weeks ago on uh, the live stream I did with Faisal on his channel um, it was, uh, I was saying that part of the reason I feel that I can make certain progress in changing my behavior improving my habits or my behavior is because i forgive myself easily and um and this is basically saying the opposite that don't forgive yourself easily like when you're doing even a good deed if you didn't do it that well then just be real with yourself and just kind of admonish yourself and just remind yourself how lacking you are compared to what Allah is deserving of in terms of worship and and servitude and seeking his pleasure. So um, I don't really know how to do with this personally. Like, I guess I, yeah, I, I have to look at my deeds or not deeds, but look at my acts of worship that I try to incorporate into my life and really compare them to the greats. And I don't, I'm not just talking about the greats like the prophets or the uh, companions I'm talking about the greats who are alive right now like even friends I have how much have I uh, memorized of the Quran compared to them how much do I read Quran compared to them how much do I pray at night compared to them how much do I fast compared to them and you know all of us hopefully if we have some decent good friends we'll find that we are lacking compared to them and that's what I need to do more of I think and you know, like we talked in the last episode, I'm not, neither me nor Muhammad are uh, surrounded by many people at all. I'm not talking about good people or bad people. I'm just saying, generally, we're not surrounded by people. So I need to have, um, I need to basically have some kind of 
social links with people, especially good people. And generally, uh, and yeah, generally, when you meet up with people, you're going to talk about things. Oh, I was just doing my hifth. Oh, I just found this Arabic t teacher. Oh, I was just studying this. And it's like, oh, yeah. Like, it's it's actually all subconscious, not subconscious, but subtle. And it's not mentioned directly. Um, nobody might be, no one's really showing off. They're just mentioning general things. Like, you know, you're going about your day and you're doing different things. Now, those things come up, right? Those things come up that, oh, I've got a one-on-one -on -one Arabic tutor. I've got a, uh, I'm doing my hev now, right? I've memorized six juz. And, and then you, you'll sit in there, you know, quiet in the cafe or whatever, and you're thinking, right, yeah, like, these guys are, quote, unquote, on my level, right? Like, I'm I'm friends with them. I'm meeting up with them. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not doing my hev. Like, I memorized two juz, one juz. Wow, okay. And, and this guy just mentioned, you know, not in a showing off way, but he's just like, you know, yeah, I was up, like, just before Fajr. And then he... I'm like, oh, my alarm is set for like an hour after Fajr because of X, Y, Z. And yeah, I need to be waking up at least on time for Fajr. You get it? So um, good good, uh, good uh, companionship, good company, really, I feel is really, really powerful. And it will hopefully, that that's basically what I'm saying is I feel like it will help me to admonish myself more and see my deeds as lacking, right? See my deeds as lacking. And, you know, I... I I really do, I do notice this with my Salah, for example. Um, I, I do see that uh, certain specific areas where it's lacking. But um, I think in other areas, sometimes I try to praise myself a bit. I try to give myself a bit of credit because that will motivate me to do more. So uh, it's an internal battle, ultimately, that I need to find the right balance. Because I do see a lot of benefit in giving myself a bit of credit and, uh, you know, yeah, basically saying, yeah, well done, you did this, most people don't do this, you've done this, alhamdulillah, that's good. But then also having that company and having those reminders that you're only 5% there, right? You've got 95% of the journey to go. So that's just some of my thoughts on that topic. Um, and it can be difficult for us, I think, because uh, a lot of us, we're not on that level, that high level where we're like fasting three days a week and we're reciting Quran every single day or you know we've memorized like 10 juz and we're on the 11th and most of us are not in that position right so therefore we, we and people around us are not anywhere near that as well you know on average so so to admonish ourselves too tough I think um, could have negative consequences um, but ultimately it's about finding the right balance for you um, I think for example me if I was surrounded by people who were doing much better than me and I'm like meeting up with them regularly, ultimately it would make me feel bad about myself. But I know myself that that would probably help me and spur me on. So when I have that choice between, you know, I've got free half an hour or an hour, it would make me much more likely to choose to do have than, you know, open YouTube, to be honest. So um, that that's my thoughts on that. Um, Next, uh, what I've got down here that the Sheikh said is, yes, this one, this was a really good one. So he said, um, so regularly hold yourself to account and ask yourself, what am I actually accomplishing here? Um, so he said, like, it could be at the end of the day. It could be at the end of the week or month. And he said it's especially powerful over long periods of time. So let's say um, every year. But well, he, he gave the example of 10 years. He said, after 10 years of doing da'wah, um, it's really powerful to sit down and ask yourself, you know, what have I accomplished? You know, I've been working, I, I've been doing, but what have I been accomplishing? Am I going in the right direction? Is my da'wah the way it should be, right? Is what I'm teaching actually benefiting and creating that change that I want to see? And, you know, obviously you've got to be very um, honest with yourself. Um, personally, what I thought is a good time frame at least for me, like maybe like he, he's talking about somebody who might be 40, 50 years old, been doing Dawa for a long time. And so then a 10 year look back is, is suitable there. Um, as for me, I mean, 10 years ago, I was like, you know, not serious, I would say not serious person. So it wouldn't be a good look back for me 10 years. But uh, I think every month 
it, it will be good for me to look back. Um, certainly every six months and 12 months as well would be good. Um, I kind of already do that. I try to do it in Ramadan where I, I see, I just got into this habit of Ramadan being like the beginning of my year in a way. And so Ramadan is when I plan my uh, goals for the next six months. And then when those six months end, I plan another six months goals. Um, so, but I think also six months is a long time in terms of if you just flop, like you're doing this muhasaba, you're doing the, you're holding yourself to account. If I waited six months to hold myself to account, it wouldn't have that effect quick enough. But if I do it every month, then I think that that's just the right timing. You know what I mean? So in this muhasaba, in this um, taking yourself to account, what he suggests is uh, asking yourself, okay, in the last whatever time frame, what did I do? Uh, what did I not do that you know I should have done? Uh, what could I have done that I didn't do? You know, I thought that was an interesting one. Like, okay, um, work. You know, work in the last few months was a bit slow. I wasn't under much pressure, so I could have done more. Whatever X Y Z, and did I or did I not? Right. So there's that, and then of course just you know general general other things like okay, what did I? What sins have I been doing? What sins was I kind of found myself regularly doing in the last month or six months or whatever you want to do? Um, this is this is important. And uh, personally, I, I would say definitely to write it down, write these things down and really do it in a bit of a formal way. So write it down and set yourself aside from everyone. Sit alone and spend half an hour, an hour or more uh, doing this uh, every whatever. Obviously, if it's half an hour, it's not going to be a daily thing. Um, but yeah, I think this is good to see your trends as well. If you do it every month or every six months or whatever, you're going to see trends and hopefully you're going to get better. So that was a big one, uh, holding yourself to account. Um, then he said, because he's saying that unfortunately, the the religious people, the committed people, he doesn't see them doing as much as he would expect them to, to do. So they are seeking knowledge. You do find them at the masjid. But what moves are they making in the society? What moves are they making in the world? Um, and are they actually, even in their seeking of knowledge, are they actually reaching the high levels? Or are they just dilly-dallying at the lower or mid levels, right? And he said, it, it pains me when I you know come out the masjid or whatever, and I just see people chit-chatting. And these are the practicing people, he's saying. They're just chit-chatting and it, it kind of pains me. So he said, you need to be extremely aware of the value of time. Extre and he said, some of the, uh, I can't remember the example he gave, but it's like the in the Western world, they really understand the importance of time. Um, and yet we don't, like, and, and we should. Obviously, we're the Ummah of uh, Wal Asr, for example. And he said, you need to be just how the man, a stingy man, is with his money. You need to be like that with your time. In terms of every minute, uh, you need to be careful of where am I spending this minute? What am I doing? What am I getting? What return am I getting out of this minute? Okay, so, so he said, be very protective of your time. Use it wisely. And become good at managing your time um become good at managing your time and uh, again i've got to admit that i don't know if it's something to do with practicing people i think it's just people in general um people are very casual about their time and it all it's like you're the weirdo if you want to like be very scheduled and um organized Right. It's like you're the geek of the class. Right. If you want to be organized, you want to do things by calendars. Um, that's what I find anyway. And I just think that whatever you want to think about it, you know, whether you think that's um, it's true. Yeah, that is weird. That is over the top. I know some people gen genuinely think it's over the top to be very organized, use calendar, use like like I do, like a project management tool for my daily task and productivity and stuff. People think it's over the top, it's kind of geeky or whatever. But ultimately, whether you use apps and these different things or not, people who get stuff done in this life, I'm talking about good, pious people that get stuff done, they are good with their time, right? They value their time and they, um, 
they just they just see it as an investment like this this time is going away right uh, this 24 hours is ticking down and so i can't store it it's like the the analogy of the man selling ice you know the man selling ice he, he's got the ice blocks he's in the market and he's trying to sell the this ice if he doesn't sell it quick it's going right he doesn't have the choice to put it somewhere and store it it is melting right so same with our day like our 24 hours it is leaving you right whether you like it or not so you don't have the choice of saving it you only have the choice of either selling it right so getting a good return from that time or watching it melt away and giving you nothing so um yeah i, I think uh, i've alhamdulillah i would say uh, obviously i'm just comparing myself to the average person but uh, i would say i'm okay with this but in the last few months i'm not really happy uh with what i've uh, been doing in this regard so again it was a good reminder you know these things and this is this is really what i find people the real actual pious religious whatever you want to call it people they're actually amazing when it comes to the dunya right like if they were to put their goal and their direction and their aim and their objective towards the dunya they would you would find that they are the best in business or in medicine or in architecture or whatever it is you give them youth work um project management whatever it is you give them they'd actually be really good at it right it's just that you they've dedicated themselves to the islamic sciences for example so that's what you see them excel in but the traits that they have and their attitude and their mindset means that they are actually uh, basically they've got all of those traits in place they've got the discipline the work ethic the time management to be lethal in any field okay any field like um, obviously we uh, in the in the modern like you know current culture we kind of uh praise these glorify these people like i don't know um elon musk again i mentioned him um i don't know singers or whatever like you hear singers talking about how much they're working right some of them how much they're working um elon musk like you know it, it got out you can see him in his eyes he's he's tired right he works a lot um but these are the amount of hours of the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these people are putting in those kind of hours a lot of the time and you just might not know um it, because it's not in the magazines and the newspapers and the youtube videos but this this is this is what they're doing in private you know they're sleeping four or five hours a night for years in private um and allah knows right allah knows obviously but all i'm saying is the actual scholars the actual you know the people that i would say have my ultimate you know respect and the people that i uh, aim to be like etc 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 the legit ones that is meaning they're actually the top level it's not just they've got a lot of followers or they're funny or you know they're entertaining to listen to good speakers no the actual proven ones if you know i hope you know what i mean by that they if you put them in any field they would excel that's what i'm trying to say and we need to really recognize and understand that that it's not just that oh he was born like into a family memorizing the quran no they've actually taken on traits that are valuable in any field right they would i'm telling you if you tell one of these kind of people um we, we've arranged the capital for you the investment money um you know we're going to start a electric car company they would excel right they would obviously have to learn business not all of them may, may be suited to business but with the work ethic the attitude the the personal this is a big one as well personal skills right like being following the sunnah in how you deal with people will make you really good with people people will like you people will um, take you seriously etc people respect you just from following the sunnah right so anyway anyway that's that's just what i want to say about following the sunnah it gives you work ethic right thick skin um, ambition um, productivity all of these things all of these things it shouldn't be that we separate these things too much from the dunya side of things and the akhirah seeking the akhirah side of things right it's not just limited to the islamic sciences and 
طلب العلم seeking knowledge etc okay so become good at managing your time this is important for someone seeking the akhirah as much as seeking the dunya more more because somebody who understands the akhirah understands that the dunya is limited and the time is running out okay he said also the reason that i find people um, not accomplishing what they could be accomplishing right like alhamdulillah they're committed to islam they're not doing these big sins publicly and this and that um, he said two reasons one is the time thing the other thing is fawda chaos chaos in terms of their organization and the way they're going about in this case seeking knowledge so he said that what you'll find is some people they they don't have any um, structured um, kind of program for themselves of how they're going to gain knowledge right Islamic knowledge um, when when the their local sheikh is teaching fiqh they study fiqh when the local sheikh is teaching sirah they study sirah when the local sheikh is on holiday another one comes they they're doing uh, i don't know uh, tafsir they'll just go and do tafsir they don't have a program of this is how i'm going to get to where i want to get okay um and and that was something he was saying as well that uh, you've got to have a clear program of what you're going to do right so um, it could uh, obviously for, for for most people it's just going to be when it comes to seeking Islamic knowledge it's going to be joining a program a two year a three year a four year whatever it is program and following their structure because they've given you a structure if you're not going to do that then uh, you you probably should spend a bit of time first gathering um, all the topics all the books or the YouTube series or however you're going to do it um, and putting it into a plan you know make your own curriculum if you like if you're not going to follow a curriculum for whatever reason then have your own now the same applies to um, accomplishing anything else so like uh, for me let's say for me I'm uh, running my business but let's talk about like um, writing a book so like writing a book I need to be organized with it okay what is the way that accomplished authors write books okay they start with let me research that first yeah then it's like okay well they have this system of doing their research so let me follow that let me use their method okay so I'm gonna do research it's gonna take approximately whatever six months for that okay let me put aside six months where I'm gonna be doing research I'm gonna be following a real method a proven method for doing the research then after that research I'm gonna start writing now turning this amount of research that I've done all the stuff I found into actual writing that might take another four months okay let's four months let me plan that down okay now what they suggest after writing is that you get um, three people to check it okay so now three people to check it is gonna take me that uh, it's gonna take them about let's say one month to check it and give you feedback okay one month so that so you get it so at whatever you're doing have a structured plan for it and it's something that could just take one or two hours before you you start the journey that might this journey might be a six month to a six year journey just spend 60 minutes planning that right 60 minutes uh, you know 120 minutes two hours um planning it right um and don't just be going through chaos because also i find like i've done this before of course where it's like uh i was going through the book um Something fi usul tafsir muqaddima fi usul tafsir Okay, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah's book on the principles of um, tafsir, right, and exegesis of the Quran or explaining the Quran, the principles of it. Okay, and there was a there was a uh, kind of a series of lectures that that's going through the whole book. So I thought, okay, good, it's a it's a structured series. By the end, I would have gone through the whole book. Great. So I went through that. When I finished it. There was no smooth transition to okay. The next series I'm going to do is this. It, instead, because I didn't have a smooth transition, I hadn't planned what I'm going to do next. What did that resulted in weeks and weeks and weeks of just not studying anything, right? So you gotta you gotta kind of know yourself and see the patterns of of how you kind of flop, basically. Okay, then what he talked about after that was this idea of what you can accomplish people say they don't have time etc what you can accomplish in 10 minutes per day so the sheikh was saying 10 minutes per day uh, he said in 10 minutes you can read 10 pages now I, I don't know I don't think I can do that maybe 
maybe some people can do that um but i can't but anyway he was he i'll just share what he was saying so 10 minutes uh 10 pages so he said read 10 pages per day in just 10 minutes 10 pages per day that's 3650 pages per year which is he said an average book is 300 pages um those classical islamic studies kind of books are that long but you know i've got this book in front of me now let me see how many pages it is it's it's uh, the four hour work week by tim ferris okay this one actually is 350 pages okay but this is a thick book most books i read are probably 200 pages but he was saying 3650 pages if you read that that would be 10 books per year he said 10 books per year you might say oh it's not much but he said how many of you are reading 10 books per year or more you're saying 10 books is not enough he said how many of you are reading that that many books or more per year he said most people are not so start with the 10 minutes he's like what i'm saying about 10 minutes can be applied to um uh, one hour two hours a day through whatever it is but it's like i just wanted to show you that 10 minutes you can do a lot with it if you are consistent okay and I, obviously i've talked about that many times myself uh, but the sheikh was saying that and he's saying uh, what else can you do with 10 minutes a day he said you can memorize uh, two abiyat two uh, lines of poetry um, or with the quran you could memorize two ayat maybe two three ayat you could memorize that so two ayat um two ayat per day um now let's so three six five times two that's six so like let's just say 700 ayat in a year <laughs> 700 ayat i mean that's baqara is uh how many ayat <coughs> sorry let me find this out is baqara 200 and 60 a yeah so just and we, we're gonna work through this together guys okay so let me go to al imran the beginning of al imran then yes yeah, so baqarah is about is 200 and is that 86 ayat 286 ayat so if you memorized 700 ayat in a year that's like memorizing surah baqarah like three times right two point something times so let's just say you memorize two ayat a day and all you did was Baqarah. If you memorize Baqarah in a year, I, I think that's good. Isn't that like two and a half juz? Two and a half juz in a year. That's better than what I'm doing. That's better than what most people are doing. That's pretty good. Now, if you do that over 10 years, that's 25 juz over 10 years. And then for the rest of the Quran obviously you have to do muraja with Quran you have to do a revision of it but point is you could do a lot we can do a lot with 10 minutes a day so for me this really reminded me of the just really getting more getting what's the word reviving this idea with myself of the importance of being consistent because I've got these goals for myself every day of doing 10 minutes of X and 10 minutes of Y like I said, last three months or so, I have not been happy with my performance there. So this uh, lecture really reminded me of the importance of that and what I can achieve. Um, for example, I'm reading that book, uh, With the Heart in Mind by Sheikh Mikhail, Sm Mikhail Smith. I've been reading that book for months, right? And partly it's because I'm a slow reader, but partly it's because I'm not consistent. So yeah, I just, I need to get reinvigorate myself with that reminder that 10 minutes a day gets you very far 10 15 20 minutes a day gets you very far um and yeah i think that is everything that i took from this all the kind of notes that i wrote so i think some some real uh, action that we could potentially take from this i mean the, the lecture is called so change your life and i i do think some of the things he talked about some of the um, actions that he recommended can change your life so uh, one thing is to do the taking yourself to account so whether that's on a daily weekly monthly yearly basis um, having a time set aside in your calendar or in your something so you don't forget it where you're going to hold yourself to account you're going to say I did this I didn't do this I planned to do this but I didn't do it and I've been actually doing these sins um, 
over the, the last few months, and I've got to be honest with myself. I've been doing these sins, so I need to focus on stopping them, for example. So that's muhasaba, holding yourself to account. Um, the other thing is doing something 10 minutes a day, something really productive that if it built up over years, um, you'd be really proud uh, of it. So it could be memorizing two, two ayat a day. It could be reading um, a book any book whether it's in your field or something or it could be Quran or whatever it is 10 minutes a day um, that's another clear action from this um, and then what else was he saying so um, having high ambitions right so having a, a direction in life um, having a clear direction an area of specialization or area of skills that you want to gain um, and then seeing how that kind of general direction can manifest in specific projects okay so yeah I mean we could do a whole podcast just about the, that kind of stuff um, and then he said um, do istighfar so do istighfar after you finish your salah and do istighfar when you do something good uh, and you're happy with it then remember that you know it's probably lacking it's not an act of worship that is befitting of Allah and so you should do istighfar and ask Allah for acceptance and also take it as motivation that alhamdulillah I did that and that's from Allah I remember actually Hamza Zorzis he was on a he did a little uh, interview podcast thing with Muhammad Hijab and was it was it that no it was on the Ayera podcast actually where he was talking about his le is stepping down as CEO of Ayera and he's actually leaving Ayera and he said, I, he just kept repeating, I need to do istighfar, I need to do istighfar because we did something good. You know, since I was CEO, we we really made a lot of progress. And that's why I need to do istighfar, because we made a lot of progress. So um, he had the right, he had the right um, mindset there. So do istighfar when you do good deeds. Um, have high ambitions, we already said that. And really see your deeds as lacking see your deeds are lacking don't be pleased with your deeds um, say alhamdulillah that you're doing those good deeds but don't be pleased with them realize that they are not perfect and you can always do better and in the end it's from the mercy of Allah that he he might accept those from us you know um, so this has been um, a kind of little summary slash translation of the lecture by uh, let me just remember the name fully by uh, Sheikh Dr. Al Bashir Isam Al Marakshi. Um, by the way, maybe you've not heard of him because obviously his lecture is not in English. Um, this is somebody that has come up multiple times for me, right? So I don't know his exact background, but uh, he's somebody that uh, comes um, comes uh, recommended by people I trust. So um, definitely someone to check out if you know Arabic. Um, yeah, another one from Morocco that is kind of standing out alongside, uh, uh, what's his name, Sheikh uh, Saad Al-Kimli. Uh, Allah. Yes, and this, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say too much more after that actually. I mean, this is just uh, from the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, really good uh, kind of reminder for myself. So I wanted to share with you and I hope you benefited from it. Uh, you can always get in touch with this podcast with us, me and Muhammad, at uh, if you go to mindheistpodcast.com, then the email address is there. The anonymous um, curious cat thing is there to, to make your comments or suggestions or questions um, privately, anonymously. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading those. If you decided to take any action from this, then I would appreciate uh, an email or something just to let me know. Um, that would kind of remind me as well to, to get get on with it as well myself. And uh, yeah, like I said, mindhousepodcast.com. If you benefited from this or any of the other episodes, then definitely share it with a friend. You know, just send a WhatsApp link or whatever to somebody who you think would benefit. And uh, if, you know, you find yourself enjoying this episode, for example, then go and check out previous episodes. You know, scroll through them. We've got 80 whatever um, other episodes and just see a topic that catches your eye. Um, I would recommend if you haven't heard it episode 79 for sure that's probably the best one we've done and uh, yeah thanks for joining me subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik shadu an la ilaha la anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and thanks for listening.